Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what's new in BD Armory 0.7.2, but this will mostly be a tutorial about everything you want to know about BD Armory. First I want to apologize for taking so long to update it. I am working on my own game so most of my time goes towards that. Now let's start with installation. A lot of the problems people are having with missing models, textures, or features come from installing it incorrectly. First, go to your KSP folder and open the game data folder. If you already have an old version of BD Armory installed, just delete it. Then open the zip that you downloaded from Kerbal Stuff. Open the game data folder and drag the BD Armory folder into the KSP game data folder. Now that's it. Let's jump into the game and talk about how it works. BD Armory adds fixed and turreted guns, bombs, missiles, rockets, and a system to make them easier to use. It also adds a simple guard AI and some other features that I'll talk about later. First, I'll talk about the guns. There are a few different types of guns. There are turrets which can gimbal to point in whichever direction your mouse is pointing. And there are fixed guns that, are, that only point in one direction. Now different guns use different types of ammo. The M230 uses 30mm rounds, so let's get a box of that. Same with the GAU8, and the Vulcan uses 20mm rounds. Let's get one of those. Now before we roll out and test these, let's talk about the weapon manager, which is the most important part of this mod. The weapon manager has a few different functions. Mainly, you don't want to have action groups telling each gun to turn on and off individually. So what I've done is I've put everything in one part. All you have to do is set actions to change the weapon to previous weapon or next weapon. We'll talk about those other features later. For now, we can just run and see what we can do. To get shooting, all we have to do is activate one of the weapons. We set an action group to the weapon manager to do this. But if you don't, you can either right click on the weapon manager and then cycle through the weapons with that or use the toolbar. Once you have your weapon selected, just aim with the mouse and fire with the left mouse button. If you notice on the bottom left, the gun starts to overheat as you fire it. Don't worry, it won't explode. It'll just stop shooting. Fixed guns can't be aimed with the mouse, so you have to point your vehicle in the right direction. Let's try shooting at something else. Weapons damage other vessels, essentially by overheating their parts until they explode. The amount of heat they apply depends on the parts impact tolerance the velocity of the bullet, and the caliber of the bullet. Now let's take a look at some explosives. There are two types of missiles, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground. The air-to-ground missiles also work well for ground-to-ground. -ground. Now missiles can be fired by using the action group assigned to them. But if you have, say, a hundred missiles on your craft for whatever reason, you don't want to, you can't have 100 action groups for each one if you want to fire them one by one. So you can use the weapon manager for this. The weapon manager has a fire command. When you select a missile using the next or previous weapon commands or the list in the drop down menu, you can fire it by using the weapon manager's fire action group. This fire action group only works for missiles, rockets, and bombs. It does not work for the gun. An extra little piece that's also included in the mod is the adjustable missile rail. It's not entirely necessary, but you can attach it to your craft, adjust the height and length, and attach the missile to that. Sometimes it helps if you can't find a good spot to attach your missile. Let's test it out. So here we have our rover with a missile attached on the roof. I cycled through it with the action groups on the weapon manager. Pushing the fire action group, which I set to 1, it'll launch. But it didn't go very far. When you don't have a target selected, missiles will just act like a dumb fire rocket. Let's try that again, but lock onto something. 
To target a vessel, simply target it the way you normally would in KSP. In this case, I double clicked on it. Now I'll select the missile and fire. Target destroyed. Later on, I'll talk about another way you can target vessels. Here's the plane I put together so we can talk about bombs, air to ground, and air to air. We can also talk about the targeting system of the weapon manager. Let's go ahead and launch our target drone using KOS. The weapon manager's targeting system is designed to make it easier for you to target a vessel without having to fiddle around with trying to double click on the icon. To use it, all you have to do is arm it by clicking on this button or using your action group and then point in the general direction of the target and it will automatically lock it. Target destroyed. Let's turn around and try bombing something. When you switch to a bomb with the weapon manager, a reticle will appear above the ground. Then we just have to line it up and fire. Looks like we missed a little bit. Previously I've been firing missiles and bombs by using the fire action group of the weapon manager. However, by arming the weapon manager, you can use the same key that you use for turrets and guns, the default being the mouse click button. So the Vulcan normally fires by clicking. But now I can switch to a missile and hold down click and it'll fire as well. Just tapping click won't work. You have to hold down the button to fire. It also works with the dumb fire rockets. That's how you rapid fire rockets. You don't have to keep pressing the fire action group. Alright, now let's talk about guard mode. With guard mode, you can set up vessels to scan at certain intervals in a certain field of view at a certain range for targets of the opposite team. When it finds a target, it will select a appropriate weapon and try firing at it. So let's set a scan interval of about 6 seconds, field of view of 100, and guard range of 2000. These two targets are on team A, and so am I. So if I turn on guard mode, I won't attack them. However, if I switch my team to B, after 6 seconds it'll lock an enemy and fire. With guard mode, a fun thing to do is to set up a bunch of guards out in a battlefield and then try attacking them with whatever vehicle you can come up with. So let's set up some targets and try attacking them while they try shooting back at us. Here's a big anti-air truck that I built. It has a goalkeeper, which by the way is deadly if you get too close, four Sidewinder missiles, and four AIM-120 missiles. Now I want to get it far away from the Kerbal Space Center, but I don't feel like driving all the way out there. So I'm going to come up with something a little more Kerbal style. And I'll set up this guard to fire every 15 seconds with a 270 degree view angle at a range of 5,500 meters. And I want to give it some more reinforcements so I put together these two smaller anti-air drones 
in the cargo bay of this cargo plane. When you're going up against guards that have anti-air missiles, it's a good idea to equip these countermeasure pods. And make sure that you have a action group set up to fire them. Countermeasures are used to, uh, I guess, distract missiles. Get them to target the countermeasures instead of your plane. Right now I have these set up to action group 4. The more flares you pop off, the more likely uh, the missile will lock onto them. But you have a limited amount, so you have to use them wisely. Make sure your team is set to the opposite team of the guards so that they will attack you. Let's see if we can take any of these out. I'll start off with these AGM Hellfire missiles. Looks like they've already fired on me. So I'm going to take evasive action, and when they get close, pop off some flares. Dodged. Let's try taking out that big truck first. So it looks like I missed or they defended themselves against the missile. Guards do have the ability to switch to a gun or a missile to fire at incoming missiles. This is a feature of smart guards. If you want the guards to just use whatever weapon you pick for them instead of picking their own, then go to the options and turn off smart guards. I'll go over what these other options do in a little while. For now, let's try that again. Anyways, I think that covers the basics of guard mode. I want to talk about what the different settings do. You bring it up by pressing Alt and B. There are a bunch of options here including insta-kill to make each bullet automatically destroy whatever part they hit, bullet hits which are the particle effects of bullets hitting the ground. If you have frame rate issues then you may want to turn it off. Same with eject shells. If you have infinite ammo on, your guns will still consume ammo but if you run out of ammo they will still keep firing. Aim assist is on by default. It's a feature of the targeting aimers. The green reticle you see shows where it predicts the bullet will be. When you aim far away, you can see that the gun is compensating for gravity to try to hit the spot that you're pointing at. If you have a target vessel selected, it also takes into account their relative velocity. So it automatically calculates the lead time. All you have to do is line up the green dot on your target and the gun will automatically lead to try to hit the target. You can turn these aimers off by deselecting draw aimers. Debug lines just shows the trajectory simulation. As you can see at closer ranges it pretty much aims directly at the target. At farther ranges gravity is predicted and it aims up a little bit. Remote firing is off by default. As you can see, this gun is enabled. So when I switch crafts, clicking won't make it shoot. If I turn on allow remote firing, then I can still fire the turret from the craft that I'm not selecting. 
bomb clearance check, which is on by default, is a feature I made to allow you to stack bombs vertically inside a bomb bay. With it off, bombs might not fire from bottom to top. As you can see, the top ones are being fired first. With bomb clearance check on, it checks to make sure that the space below the bomb is clear. So now if I try firing, it'll fire the bottom ones. We went over smart guards earlier, but to review, having smart guards on will make it so that guards will select appropriate weapons. So say an enemy is in the air far away, it'll switch to a missile and fire on that enemy. If it's getting close, it'll switch to a gun and fire on it. It'll also automatically switch to defensive mode and shoot down missiles that are coming towards it. Turning off smart guard makes it so that it only uses whatever weapon you selected for it using the weapon manager. It won't automatically switch. Also, selecting target type will make it shoot only at vessels or only at missiles. The fire key is the main fire key that fires guns or missiles and rockets when you have um, the system armed. Right now it's set to mass zero. This is a new feature with 0.7.2. You can just click the set key and then press a key and it'll set it to that key. If I want to use, say, a joystick, I can press set key and then press the button on my joystick. I set this to the right bumper on my Xbox 360 controller. And now I can fly and shoot weapons using only my joystick, or in this case my controller. The physics load distance in default KSP is 2,500 meters. BD Army allows the ability to extend that range so you can have engagements with targets beyond 2,500 meters. By default, I set it to 5 kilometers. You can turn it up as high as you want, but there's a reason why KSP has a limited physics range. I found that setting it beyond 11 kilometers will start causing problems. In my experience, 5 to 10 kilometers is a safe extended range. However, I've seen people set these up to 100 kilometers without complaining. Just use it at your own risk. I think that about covers everything. If I missed anything that still needs explanation, just let me know and I'll make another video or I'll just reply to your comment. I've seen some crazy weaponized crafts by other people, and while I would like to get these things to fight each other, I'm sorry but I don't think we'll be able to make a multiplayer version of this, at least not for a while.